Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're given the acceleration vector and they're asking us to find the velocity and the position vector. So it's kind of the other way around. Instead of taking the derivative when we have the position vector to find the velocity vector and take the derivative velocity vector to get the acceleration vector, here we're going to have to integrate to work the other way around. Also, they're giving us some initial conditions. The position when t equals zero is i plus j and the velocity when t equals zero equals zero. So let's go ahead and do that. That means that the velocity as a function of time is going to be the integral of the acceleration as a function of time dt. Of course, we're given the equation, so this is equal to the integral of 6t in the i direction plus 12t squared in the j direction times dt. And you could separate those two integrals or do them together, whatever you prefer. And so this is equal to uh, 6 t squared over 2 in the i direction plus 12 t cubed over 3 in the j direction plus some constant of integration and that may be in vector format so I just put a little vector sign on top of that we'll see what that is in a moment first let's simplify this so 6 divided by 2 that is 3 t squared plus 4 t cubed plus a constant of integration now this is going to be the velocity vector. Now they tell us that when t is equal to zero, the velocity vector is equal to zero. So here we have v when t is equal to zero is equal to zero, which is equal to zero in the i direction plus zero in the j direction because the t's go to zero. And then that would be plus some c vector. And notice since all this is equal to c, Therefore, we know that the c vector is going to be equal to zero, so we don't have an additional constant of integration added to the integral. So now we have, let's see here, v as a function of time is simply going to be equal to 3t squared plus 4t cubed. So this is our velocity vector. Now we need to find the position vector, which means the position vector r as a function of time is going to be the integral of the velocity vector, dt, which is going to be the integral of 3t. Oh, let's see here. I'm missing something. Yes, I'm missing my i and j. Can't forget those because this is a vector, so we have to have an i and j in there. So we have 3t in the i direction plus, or 3t squared in the i direction plus 4t cubed in the j direction all times dt. All right, when I integrate that, I get the following. So this is equal to, that would be 3t cubed over 3. And notice that the 3's cancel out in the i direction, plus 4t to the 4th over 4. So the 4's cancel out, that will be in the j direction, plus some constant of integration. And again, if we set t equal to 0, notice then we get i plus j, which means our constant integration is going to be i plus j. So that means that r as a function of time is going to be equal to t cubed in the i direction plus t to the fourth in the j direction plus i plus j. And if we then combine the components for i and the components for j, that means that this is going to be equal to t cubed plus 1 in the i direction plus and then we have t to the fourth plus one in the j direction and so this is then going to be our position vector and this is going to be our velocity vector so see that's how it's done first of all to go from acceleration to velocity we integrate to go from velocity to position we integrate and if we're given initial conditions, then we can go ahead and replace the constants by what those initial conditions are equal to. And so that's how it's done when they give you an acceleration vector and they're asking for position and velocity vectors.